So this is to present our work on clocks, which is contrastive learning of cardiac signals, work that we've been doing with Ting Ting Zhu and David Clifton at the University of Oxford. So to start off, what exactly is cardiac data? It's simply data that pertains to or is retrieved from the heart. I show you here some various um, imaging modalities in addition to time series modalities. Um, for the sake of this presentation, we'll be focusing on the electrocardiogram, which is shown below. This is simply a signal that measures the electrical activity of your heart. This to demonstrate and motivate our emphasis on the ECG, um, when coupled with deep learning systems, you're able to leverage it to perform cardiac arrhythmia classification, to detect abnormalities in the functioning of the heart, and to even detect mortality. However, a lot of these systems depend on abundant labeled data. However, we're in a paradigm where the rate of generation of clinical data far exceeds the rate with which it's labeled by expert annotators. This means we have scarce labeled data and abundant unlabeled data. So the question becomes, how do we better exploit this abundant unlabeled data, perform clinically useful tasks with scarce labeled data? Our task of interest is cardiac arrhythmia classification. If you have an ECG signal X, we're going to obtain its representation H and finally predict one of K classes um, for the particular cardiac arrhythmia. Traditionally, one can perform supervised pre-training. You task a network to perform an arbitrary um, task of interest, such as object detection. If I give you an image, please predict what that image contains. You then want to somehow transfer knowledge to your downstream task of interest, and you can do so by transferring the parameters theta. The pre-training task here, however, assumes you have access to, abun to abundant labels in the pre-training task. If you don't have access to those, you can leverage self-supervised learning, an example of which is contrastive learning. So SimClear was introduced by Chen et al. last year. And if you have an image, it applies a transformation that is class-preserving, such as a rotation, and obtain its, its representation. You then apply a different transformation and obtain its corresponding representation. And we're going to call these a positive pair of representations. We're going to attract them to one another because they belong to the same original image. If you now have a different image and obtain its representation, we're going to call these a negative pair of representations and we're going to repel them from one another. At a high level, contrastive learning is a sequence of attractions and repulsions. We take inspiration from this and introduce contrastive multi-segment coding, where instead of an image, we deal with a patient's ECG segment. Our first transformation is to obtain the first subsegment T1, and obtain its representation. Similarly, we obtain its adjacent subsegment T2, and obtain its representation, H subscript B. We're going to call these to be a positive pair, and we're going to attract them to one another because they belong to the same patient segment. If we were now to obtain this from a completely different patient and obtain its representation, we're going to call these to be a negative pair of representations, um, and we're going to repel them from one another. Once again, the idea here is that you're trying to learn representations, HA, that can transfer well to your downstream task of interest. Evaluate our approach, we transfer the parameters as illustrated before, um, theta, and we freeze them, hence the snowflake sign here, once again on the task of cardiac arrhythmia classification. We pre-train on the data sets that are shown in yellow here, and then fine tune um, on the data sets shown in green, um, and more results can be found in our paper if, if interested. In the linear evaluation scenario, what we show is that our approach, CMSC, outperforms both domain-specific and generic self-supervised methods um, by a significant margin when looking at the AUC scores. Um, and that's what we're showing in this table over here. However, we also wanted to show that we can do more with less. And what we're showing you here are the learning curves of two networks, one of which is randomly initialized with access to 100% of the data, so F equals 1. And our approach, CMSC, 
um, with, only, with access to only 25% of the data, and this is shown in green. And what we're illustrating here is that our approach not only learns faster, but better with a fourth of the amount of data. And so there's a fourfold um, increase in the efficiency, so to speak. Lastly, our approach naturally leads to the learning of patient-specific representations. If you look at the figure on the right, what we're doing here is calculating the distance between representations of the same patient. We're calling that intra-patient distances. And then represent distance between representations of different patients and calling that inter-patient distances. Um, that's shown in blue and orange, respectively. And you can see that these distributions are somewhat separable um, and more specifically, more separable than what you would get with a traditional approach to Simclear. And this makes sense because Simclear lacks the notion of patient specificity in its, in its paradigm. So all in all, we've shown that clocks can be beneficial um, as a pre-training step when you're trying to transfer to downstream data sets that are scarce. It can improve label efficiency um, fourfold. And finally, it also leads to the learning of patient-specific representations, which is beneficial when you're trying to quantify patient similarity from a clinical perspective for educational and disease discovery purposes. And then moving forward, one can easily extend this to exploit additional cardiac signals as a form of multimodal self-supervised learning. Um, and so thank you for your time, and please feel free to look at our paper online for further results.